What's going on everybody? My name's Chris. Welcome to my shop. Have you ever heard of something called Kumiko? Well, here's a book about it, about how to make it actually. It's written by a guy named Matt Kinney. I first knew about Matt Kinney from his time years ago at Fine Woodworking Magazine. So he's made this book on how to cut these panels. So I've recently become interested in it, especially whenever I found out that he created a course on how to make this stuff. So anyway, today I'm going to try making a small beginner type panel. All right. I'm going to make something kind of like a grid pattern, maybe something like this grid pattern you see here. So you can see an, a good example of some Kumiko on the front of the book. Now you'll see a lot of angled pieces and stuff in between the grids. I don't have those jigs to do that, those angled cuts yet. Those are in the mail on the way. But I did buy this piece of poplar from Home Depot. It's a half inch thick. Uh, it was just one of the little hobby project panel things. And uh, just to get my feet wet, I'm going to try to make a grid pattern using this poplar and using some of the techniques I found out from Matt Kenny on his course at Domestica, plus in the book. All right, so let me show you what I got to get started. All right, so Matt uses a combination of power tools and hand tools to make his Kumiko. Uh, you can do it with all hand tools. I'm not so interested in that aspect of it. I like the idea of using power tools to get some of the stuff done. So I'm gonna go with his method, all right? So that involves making a sled. So let me get this stuff out of clamps and I'll show you what I got. This is the sled. I just did the same thing Matt did in his course. I attached it to my miter gauge here through the holes on the back. Also made a couple of push sticks. I only need one of them for this, but it's just a piece of plywood with another piece of plywood glued down here. And that's for ripping thin strips of wood so I can push like that through the blade and I can get my hand up away from the blade. So I'll get to that in a minute with the poplar. Uh, so what I need to do first is cut a kerf through this sled. I'm going to go just a little bit higher. Matt's method involves using finger joint jigs. So I'm going to go ahead and make those off camera. All right, because I'm not going to give you measurements for stuff that he made a course about and I watched and paid for. So you pay for it. Watch his course. It's really good. And you'll learn how to make this stuff. He's got plans for the sled. He shows you how to make the finger joint jigs and all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And then I'll come back to you when I get done with the finger joint, finger joint jigs. What I was trying to do there was try to get a strip that when I ripped it, it was the same width as the kerf and the table saw so that it'll fit into those slots. But I got ahead of myself. I really need to cut the um, dados or little grooves in the piece of poplar before I do that. So I'll have to do that all over again when I get done cutting uh, the strips in the poplar piece, which I'm going to do right now. Okay, I figured out the pattern that I'm going to do. So you'll see what I'm about to do. Maybe it won't make sense to you at first what I'm doing, but you'll understand later once I move the move the fence over and start cutting out strips. Of course, once I start putting it together, you'll understand completely what I am doing this for. So I've got to make one cut and set the depth of the saw blade to be correct. Let me do that first. I think that's good. Um, essentially what I'm doing is I'm basically making half lap joints uh, and you'll see how that works here in a minute but I think that's my depth that I need so I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of the cuts that I need to finish out the pattern that I want. I, I hope I have enough wood. <laughs> I really do. hope I do. All right now I've got to put this auxiliary fence on. <laughs> Let me check the book make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah I checked the book I need to move it over. I'm just kind of doing like a simpler pattern based on what's in the book. Okay, that's all I need. So I just realized you can't see the blade as I'm cutting this whole time. Sorry about that. You know, I could probably make another one of these. I've got plenty of wood. I could make another one of these and I'll make sure I have enough strips to do this whole thing. I think I may have to do that. Uh, I wish I would have thought about that. Now I got to set the depth again. Then I'm gonna make another one of these. I'll do that and catch up with you when I get done. Went ahead and made a third one just for extra good measure. So. Let me get the fence set back up like it should be, and then I'll cut strips out of these. OK, 
Okay, I need 12 strips. Hopefully I have enough. <laughs> My test strip was fitting well inside this, but now that I've got these cut, they seem like they're a little bit, just a little bit too loose. So I'm going to, on the fly, make a very small adjustment. Okay, there's 12. I made uh, they all have plenty, but I realized cutting these that I meant to make this twice as long. So not, I meant to have two grid patterns for the, those curved pieces. I'm only going to have enough for one. I don't know why I did it like that. I just did for whatever reason. I should be able to get at least enough for another whole second one. So let me go ahead and finish cutting these out while I've got the saw set up and then I'll get back with you. All right, let's do this. I got, let me separate these two. Right, so here's all the pieces I need for one panel. Some glue here. Just gonna put a little bit on here. Okay, I think I'm ready to go. So I need to, uh, <laughs> I think I'm doing this right. I'm kind of nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous. Just am. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on it. Oh, I see. Got this square piece. There's nothing to it at this point. Just gotta put it together. Once I get started cutting the uh, diagonal pieces for the inside, you don't need glue. It's, you know, it's not necessary, at least. You know, kind of just lock together. So now I gotta flip it over and fill in these. I only need three of them, so I didn't need 12 pieces. I only needed 10 pieces to make this. But on each of these, I gotta match up one, two, three, four, five joints at one time. So. See how that goes. My understanding is you can take a piece of wood too and push down and get more weight on it. That one doesn't feel... Okay, yeah, it's flush. Didn't feel like it was flush. Ah, not too shabby. I think it's pretty cool. So, once I get those... Um, guide blocks in. I'll be able to pull all, put all the diagonal pieces and I'll be able to make a pattern out of this, which is this pattern here. That's called, wait, that's not the right one, is it? Yeah, that's the right one. That like flower looking pattern. It's called Asanoha. That's the pattern name. And this is just the starting grid to that. So let me put the other one together and I'll come back to you. Well, you know, I got to say that was actually pretty fun. I ended up with three of these panels. They're just grid patterns, so once I get my jigs in to cut the angles, I'll be able to practice on three to make three Asanoha patterns. Uh, that's going to be pretty fun, so um, I would recommend you check this book out if you wanted to get into Kumiko. It's got some good uh, descriptions. There's like ten panels or so that he covers uh, different kinds that you can do, uh, more intricate ones. Uh, so I would recommend you get this, uh, or you can go through his course on Domestica, which is just an app. I'll put a link to uh, his course on there, and I'll put a link to his website where you can even purchase those jigs like, like I talked about. Um, I did not get my angle jigs from him simply because he's out of stock right now of one of the sizes that I need. So I found them somewhere else uh, for about the same price, and I got those. So otherwise, I would have bought his. Totally would have bought, bought yours, Matt. I doubt, doubt if you'll ever watch this, but if you do, <laughs> I totally would have bought yours, but you just were happen to be out of stock at this time. So I'm putting a plug in for your website. Matt, check it out. I appreciate y'all watching this. And uh, go ahead and hit subscribe if you want to see more videos on Kumiko. Thanks for watching. Bye.